as we've been singing there the story in Exodus chapter 3 as Moses is just going along just performing his normal daily duties tending his sheep and then he comes across this this strange phenomena that's taking place there's this bush that, that is on fire but it's but it's not being consumed by the fire and he goes over to, to take a look and then he hears God speak to him this incredible encounter that he has with with God there and God says Moses I want you to take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is, is holy ground reading through 
story of Joshua just a couple of days back and something similar happened to him as he's taken over now from, from Moses to lead the people of Israel into the promised land and again he gets told to take off his sandals because the place that he's standing is holy ground and you know wherever God is that's holy ground and he's here this is holy ground I'm not going to ask you to take your shoes off this morning you'll be glad to hear that but I think it's just that sense that why would he get them to do that I think there's something that just doesn't want there to be anything between him and them and just that, that that sense of coming together as as oneness and you know we're going to share communion in a few moments as we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on our behalf that he gave up his life so that we can know God personally for ourselves how how amazing is that so often God was seen as this distant person but Jesus brought him so much closer to us that he's a God who's interested in our lives in every part of our lives he doesn't want there to be anything between us and him and it's just that case of not not taking off our shoes but let's just for a moment as we get ready to, to share this simple um, cup and this wafer together these these emblems let's make sure that there's nothing between us and him today just take a moment as the band are just playing quietly for us maybe just in the quietness of your of your own heart and those of you watching online as well do this wherever you're watching this from just examine our hearts just for a moment God is there anything that I'm harboring in my heart right now that, that, that could be offensive to you there's that wonderful prayer that, that, that David wrote Psalm 139 in that Psalm there it says search me O God know my heart test me see if there's any offensive way within me because as we come and we share these emblems we don't want to do it in an unworthy manner if there's anything that we recognize that that, that we're, we're carrying within let's take a moment just to bring it before him and make a decision that we're going to deal with it we're going to put right whatever it might be that might be putting ourselves right with him saying God forgive me and come afresh into my heart now or it might be that we're harboring maybe unforgiveness bitterness towards someone and we need to deal with that we say God I want to I want you to help me to, to put this right and maybe restore that relationship whatever it might be but let's just take a, a few moments shall we just to examine our hearts John writes in his in his gospel he says greater love greater love has no one than this than he would lay down his life for his friends and that's exactly what Jesus has done for you and me today isn't it 2,000 years ago he laid down his life surrendered his life gave his life up willingly was a, allowed himself to be crucified to a cross even though he'd done absolutely nothing wrong that he could take upon himself the punishment that you and I deserve to receive from, from a holy God for the things that we've done wrong. But Jesus took it upon himself. And he says, come to me. Invite me in. Make me your Lord and Savior. And if you've done that, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, this is an open invitation for you, those of you again joining us online if you've got your your emblems if you've got your your cup why don't we just take off that top layer and get that little wafer together reminds us of Jesus's body that was broken for us why don't we together just just eat this now the body of Jesus broken for you just 
drink the, the juice, shall we? It reminds us of Jesus' blood that was shed for us. I've picked up the joke cup this morning. Can't get into it, but hey. Let's just drink this. The, the, the blood of Jesus shed for us. we're doing this let's just let's just thank him for his goodness to us in our lives I'm going to ask us to pray for a few people in a few moments but just before we do that I want to give the opportunity maybe just to express your own prayer of thanksgiving to him this morning just simple words acknowledging his goodness to you his faithfulness to you in, in your life Maybe those of you online, put a comment in the chat, just thanking him, expressing your, your thankfulness to him today. It's good to give thanks, isn't it? A couple of praise report cards here. First of all, um, Ishbel gave birth on Wednesday. Eight pound, eight ounces to, to Mabel, Dinah, Straker. So we rejoice with Ishbel and Dean. I know they're not here this morning, but if you're watching online, guys, we're, we're so delighted for you. We rejoice. We can't wait to meet her. And uh, we hope and pray that she's not keeping you up too much at the moment. And uh, for, for Josh as well, Josh uh, passed his, his grade eight on his drums. Was it last week, the week before? Last week, yeah, well done. So, so, so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But you know, we've got a few people we want to pray for this morning. A uh, number of us were down here yesterday for the, for the men's breakfast. Thank you to all those who waited on us and those who cooked and, and served. That had a, had a tremendous time. A really encouraging word from, from John that John brought to us. But afterwards, just, just on the back of that, most people had gone home then. And uh, Madupe, they're not here this morning. Madupe and Raf and, and Tosin and the family. Madupe had a, had a call just saying that her brother, um, based in Wales, suddenly had, had passed away yesterday. And so I know that they're going to be looking to make their way down there I think to be with them so if we can hold Madupe and, and, and Raf and everyone up in our prayers right now that would be really appreciated for them I'm, I'm sure absolute um, sudden sudden news to, to receive that and then Ron Ron Farrington 
Ron, I think, will be watching again this morning. Ron and Christine, they were away on holiday last week up in the Lake District. And then Ron uh, began to have the sudden pains. I know he's suffered in the past with uh, pulmonary embolism. So he was rushed into uh, the hospital up there in the lakes. And, and over the past few days, he's been into three different hospitals. It isn't the blood clot, which is really good. But Ron is still in a lot of pain in his chest and in his back. And so if we can continue to remember Ron and Christine in our prayers, that would be really, really helpful. Uh, Steve has asked if we can pray for his sister Ruth for success in a job interview tomorrow morning. So let's remember Ruth in our prayers. And I don't know if Jimmy's here this morning, Jimmy Hignett. So Jimmy's someone new to the church recently. But uh, this Thursday, I'm going to be taking the funeral of his uh, long-standing partner of uh, 35 years who passed away just a couple of weeks ago. So if we can remember Jimmy and all of the family in our prayers as well. And you know, I'm sure a room this size, number of this people here, well, not far off a couple of hundred people, there's going to be other issues that we're all facing. Church, can we, can we just pray together? And if you would, like if you've been here any length of time, you know how this works. I'm not going to prolong it. But if you would really value someone maybe reaching out their hand or coming alongside you, just praying with you right now, would you pop your hand up for us? Um, even if it's your first time here, you might be going through something. Thanks, Mandy, over there. Maybe one or two. You can lean over just around Mandy and pray for, for Mandy there. Any others? Louise here. Any other hands going up? Hey, you know, we're a family. don't know what it's like in your family, but in ours, if someone's got a need, we, we try and come around one another and we pray, bring it before God. He's the one who, at the end of the day, is able, isn't he, to, to help us. So often we feel helpless in our own natural ability, but, you know, we, we have a God who is able. Amen? Oh, come on, church. We have a God who is able, able to do immeasurably above all that we can ask, imagine, or think. And I wonder sometimes if we don't see him respond, it's because we don't bring them, our needs before him. Or we don't believe big enough that he's able to. We look at it and we somehow make this situation bigger than God. Hey, let me tell you, nothing is bigger than him. No one is bigger than him. He's able to do immeasurably, exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, imagine or think. And so we want to exercise faith. We're a faith people, aren't we? Is anyone listening this morning? Hey, come on, church. We're a faith people. This isn't hype trying to get you to respond. This is hope. This is the reality of what we carry within us. And so as people have got their hands up, come on, can, can we pray for these other needs as well? And those of you online, please join in with us now. Father, we bring these needs before you. These hands that are represented, that have been lifted up. Lord, it's not just one person, I'm sure, that's been impacted by these, but it's a, a number of people, families, groups of people together. And Father, we bring them all before you because you're the one who is able. And Lord, we never want to lose sight of that. That we're, we're not coming to some distant deity who's disinterested in our lives, but we're coming before a God who loves us so much, so much that he was willing to, to come to earth as one of us. Lord Jesus, this is what you did for us. This is how much you love us. We thank you that you're interested in every part of our lives, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter how private, no matter how public it might be. You are interested in every area of our lives. And we thank you that you're our healer today. And so we pray for those who are struggling with with sickness and with illness. We think of Ron. Father, we pray that you would touch him and minister strength and healing to his body right now in the name of Jesus. Father, for others who are maybe recovering from surgery or waiting to go into hospital for surgery or for tests, may they know your hand upon them. Lord, we think of those who are bereft right now and for Madupe and Raf and the whole family and for Jimmy and the wider family there. Father, we ask that you would come alongside and you would comfort them as you said blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted and we ask that you would come alongside them and comfort them father where there's an interview taking place for Ruth God will you help her give her give her the uh, 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 peace as she steps into that tomorrow we pray Lord we love you we bless you thank you that you're with us thank you that you're you're for us 
And Lord, as we step into the remainder of this day and into this week, this fresh week ahead of us, may we never lose sight of that truth that you are with us and that you're working out your plans and your purposes in our lives and on our behalf. And Lord, as a people, may we be those who are willing to come alongside others as we listen to, to what might be taking place in other people's lives, that God, you would use us this week to, to breathe life into the lives of others, to, to make a difference into the lives of others, maybe to pray for others and trust that as we pray, we're going to see your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth, in their lives, in their situations, as it is in heaven. Father, we bless you. And we thank you that you're always at work in our lives. And today we want to honor you and tell you afresh that we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's show our appreciation to Suzanne and the team for leading us this morning, shall we? Now, I know you're all sitting nice and comfortable, so you know what I'm going to do in a moment, don't you? I'm going to get you up. I'm going to get you to turn around. But just quickly, how many of you can remember the Minute Mingle? Yeah. One or two hands are going up. This is something that we used to do pre-COVID, and then, of course, COVID put a stop to all that. We're re reintroducing the Minute Mingle, okay? Which means you've got 60 seconds. That's all you've got to turn around, to say hello to someone, to make someone feel welcome, maybe to introduce yourself to them. And then you're going to quietly make your way back into your seats. But let's go. There should be some sound with that as well. Your time is up. The 60 seconds are gone. If you want to be looking to make your way back into your seats. Okay, let's all look to make our way back into our seats. It's got a few notices that I want to. I see what I've started again now. I've got you all hyped up and everything. I know the young people are just making their way out to go upstairs to their program. Let's give them a little bit of applause, shall we, as they go, encourage our young people. Paul and the team are doing such a great job in uh, working alongside them. But hey, it is great to have you with us. If you weren't here right at the start when we, when we kicked off, you might not have heard me welcome you. But if it's your first time here to Lakeside today, can we give you a really special welcome? I am hoping that as you came in, you'll have been handed a, a little blue bag. Inside there, you'll find a number of goodies, some details about the church and some uh, 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 a few things in there as well that are yours to keep, just some little gifts. We'd love you to take a moment, if you wouldn't mind, to either fill in this card that you'll find in the bag, just so we can write out to you, not only say thank you for, for coming and being here with us this morning, but maybe you're looking for a church to become a part of, and we would love to be able to connect with you 
to have that conversation. The other way that you can do that is to, if you've got a smartphone, take it out, have a look at that QR code on the back of the seat in front of you and scan that and you can fill that online form digitally for us there as well. You can also register to get the weekly church news email that we send out every Thursday. So if you want to be kept up to speed with all that's taking place in the life of the church, that is by far the best way to be able to do that, to let us know. But uh, if you didn't get one of those bags, please do let us know. Have a chat with one of the team in the blue t-shirts. They would love to put one of those into your hand before you leave. Just a couple of things to share, and then I'm going to invite someone up for a few minutes. And and that is to say that in a couple of weeks' time, on Sunday the 19th of March, can anyone tell me what's happening on that day? It is Mother's Day. That's right. Sunday the 19th, two weeks' time, it's Mother's Day. So we're going to be doing something to to honor the the, the ladies, the moms, grandmas, moms-to-be, surrogate moms and all that. We're going to be doing something to celebrate that as part of our service. But also, just to let you know that that Sunday, we are going to be starting 15 minutes later than normal. So we're going to be starting at 11.15 because there's the Mad Dog 10K race, which happens every year that's taking place. And there's new owners over that now. And they got back in touch with us a number of months back. um, And they were trying to get it moved forward so it didn't really impact us with us Uh, with everyone coming in, but they've not been able to for different reasons. And so they have asked us if we would possibly be able to put our service back 15 minutes. And so chatting with them, we really want to be helpful with our community. And it's just a one-off. So for that Sunday, just to let you know that we are going to be starting at 11.15 as opposed to 11 o'clock. Again, we'll keep you notified of that, uh, keep reminding you of that in the run-up to that, but uh, it's just to give you that heads up this morning. And then the other thing is to say, we're going to take our offering right up at the end, as we normally do. So uh, we believe everything we have is because God has given it to us. And so there's different ways that we worship in. One of those by the, is, is through the giving of our finances, through our tithes and our offerings, our opportunity to say, hey, God, I, I trust you with this. And so uh, you can give digitally, there's different ways that you can do that on the screen, but also we're going to be passing the containers around right at the end if you've come physically to to give to him this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness in that area. I'm going to invite Lindsay to come and join me for a few moments. Give Lindsay a little bit of a ripple of applause with you. Because it is Lindsay's last Sunday with us. It's her last Sunday. She's been part of this church for, for how long now, Lindsay? Five years. Five years. And uh, she's been working in our coffee house, been doing caretaking. But something really exciting has been uh, um, in the offing for Lindsay. I know something that you've been wanting to do for, for some time now, isn't it? And that's going to be happening this week, which has meant that you've, you've handed in your notice here. Hence the, the advert that we put out last week for uh, the caretaking stroke coffee house role. But Lindsay, tell us what it is that you're going to be doing this week. So I'm going to Matsey Hall in uh, Doncaster to uh, a training centre to be to train to become a counsellor because that's what I want to do. But I've got no education and uh, I can't even spell all right properly, to be fair. But um, God's been calling me out for about six months now. And I'm like, God, but where to? And he's going, come out and I'll show you, come out from the place you're familiar with. I've not been happy at home. I've not been happy here. But it's because God's calling me. And I want, I was resisting it because uh, I love this job. This is my security. It's my family, my home. It's everything. It's got me to the point where I'm weller than I've ever been. Yeah. Five years I've got well in this building with Jesus. And I've plugged into the life groups. I've come to prayer meetings all the time. I've come to the church. Plug in. If you want to get well, you can get well in this building and everything that goes on in this building. Oh, that's great. Yeah, right. and I, I honestly, I'm not sad to leave because I've just got so much, I've been shown God's love in this place through so many people and people have sewn into me in so many different ways, including finances, obviously, including my teeth, including Cambodia, including loads of different things, me. 
<laughs> and I'm like the glory of God, you know, I mean the joy of the Lord. And I'm like, thank you. And that's from all you people and people that aren't here as well that have sown into my life and encouraged me, you know what I mean? And every hug I've given this place to people, it's true, it's genuine. I've had some amazing encounters with people and it's just been brilliant. And I thank you. Fantastic. And so you go on. <laughs> So you go on Tuesday. How long is this course It's for nine for? months. Nine months. So yeah. it's, it's residential. It's residential. So I'll You're be leaving the house. You're going to be doing the, the next level in terms of counselling because you've already yeah, got... Yeah, I've got my level two in counselling, but because the level three and onwards that to be done on a computer, I can't even look at one of them things. I can't stand my phone. <laughs> I hate it. I hate technology. So um, at this place, it's got, it's got the facilities that I need that enables me to do this on a laptop because it's got voice recognition. <laughs> like, thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's brilliant now. I'm doing health and social care, which I need to get a job doing support work, which is what I want to be doing. And then I've got doing theology, which is going to be brilliant because I get to know the Bible even more. Yeah, brilliant. So, I mean, it's just got God all the way through it. Well, I wouldn't be going if it weren't God because I can't read or write properly even still. But I know that with him, all things are possible. Yeah, and he right. is, he is in me is greater than he is yeah. in the world. That's so it. it's a win-win. That's <laughs> it. Well, listen, look, we are absolutely delighted for you. For us, it's bittersweet because we're going to miss you being around. Like we've missed you already over the past couple of weeks. And then people, just after you left, people got COVID. And we were thinking, can we call Lindsay back <laughs> to help us? But because you were a bit swollen yeah. with your new teeth, give us a smile, show us them new teeth that you've got, eh? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> but, but we are delighted for you. We're excited for you. We're going to be cheering you on. Know that you've always got a home to come back to here. But can we just pray for Lindsay as she, as she goes? Because she needs our, our prayers. Father, we thank you that, uh, Lord, you've got us firmly in the palm of your hand. And you've got Lindsay firmly in the palm of your hand. And we're excited for her, Lord. We look back and we see where you've brought her from and where you've brought her to. And thank you, Lord. It's all because of your goodness. It's all because of your grace. Lord, we thank you for the love that she said she's received in this place. And Lord, we pray that she would continue to know this love that will cheer her on and encourage her on and into every good thing that you've got for her. And Lord, I know she's looking forward to all that she's going to be doing and looking forward, as she said just now, to, to, to learn the, the, the Bible more, to know the Bible more. But Father, I pray it wouldn't just be about having Bible knowledge, that she would know the author. Of, of, of scripture in such a deeper and a more intimate way and that you would continue to radically transform her life and, and help transform her into the woman of God that you have called her to become. Not that she is now, but the one that you've called her to become. So thank you. You've got great things ahead for her. May she know your peace. May she know your continued provision in these days to come. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, man. Let's give her another round of applause. <laughs> Exciting, huh? Okay, turn with me, if you've got a Bible, to Matthew chapter 15. We'll read some verses together in a little while. But just while you're turning there, just by way of a straw poll exercise, just raise your hand for me, Willie, this morning, if you've ever worried over anything. Might be your kids, might be the job, it might be finances, it could be a whole number of things. Come on, just get your hands up really high if you've ever worried over anything. Okay, listen, keep your hand up if you've ever been afraid. Might have been a job interview that someone's going for, it might be the fear of the future. But okay, looking around, there's almost pretty much all the hands are still up here as well. Keep your hand up if you've ever got angry at some point. Maybe someone's cut you up in traffic. Some hands have gone a little bit straighter there. It's, confession's great for the soul, isn't it? It's good to tell the truth in church. Maybe someone's cut you up when you've been in the traffic, or maybe someone's let you down, and that's caused some, some anger issues to, to rise up from within. Maybe just keep your hand up this morning if you've ever felt guilty as well. Maybe you've let someone down, or there's an injustice that's taking place and oh, you've got angry and all of that or maybe you've stolen something and you've felt guilty 
over that. Keep your hand up if you've had your hand up all the time that you've never yet put it down. Okay, pretty much all of us. I think that's really telling, isn't it? As I said before, we're kicking off a new series this morning that we're going to run over the next few weeks, taking us up to Easter Sunday, that is called You're Not the Boss of Me. Say that with me. You're not the boss of me. I've got to give credit to North Point Church in Atlanta. It's one of their series, and so we're going to use some of their content along with some of our own as well. I know some of the other network churches have have ran this and found it so helpful because over these next five weeks, we're going to have a look at how we can learn to say no to the emotions that so easily, so often control our lives. And by that confession that we've just done, all of us struggle with this in some way, don't we? All of us have this internal war taking place at various times in our lives where it causes different emotions to rise to the fore within us. Because how many of you have ever found yourself saying something or doing something that you look back on and you think to yourself, I really don't know why I did that. Or I really don't know why I said that. I have no idea where that came from. Any other hands again can recognize that this morning? All of us, not just on one occasion, but I'm sure on multiple occasions, we found ourselves feeling those things or saying those things. And these are the things that we want to have a look at during this series together, how we can learn to say no to those potentially destructive and damaging emotions. Because here's a truth for us to grab hold of this morning. When emotions get out of control, all kinds of things can easily get out of control. When emotions take control, rather, things can easily get out of control. And they can cause us to behave or respond in in crazy ways. I won't ask for a show of hands for that one, but I'm sure we can all think of things where that has happened in our own lives. And I think this is going to be really helpful for us all, whether you're a follower of Jesus or not, person of faith or not, this is going to be something that all of us find really helpful because emotions are what make us human, aren't they? There's something all of us experience no matter what our age, our background, our culture might be. All of us have emotions. They're a big part of what make us human. I said last weekend, I like my cooking programs. I remember last Saturday morning, I was watching James Martin as I sometimes do. And just towards the end of his show, if any of you saw that, he made this a chocolate pudding, one of these melt-in-the-middle chocolate puddings. Steve watched it. Thanks, Steve. (laughs) And just as he cut into that, he got his guest there, and he he, he, he made this this lovely pudding. And just as he cut into it, all the this this chocolatey goodness just began to pour out onto the plate around it and uh, uh, surround the ice cream that was on there as well. And as I looked at that, I thought, you know, that's a great picture of really what I want to talk about this morning because if I was to cut into you or if you were to cut into me, what is it that would pour out? Especially maybe when the pressure's on or you're feeling up against it, what is it that you're carrying within that if you were to be sliced open would begin to pour out from within you? Because how many of us, if we're honest, wish that we could go back to certain moments in our histories, relive certain moments again, because we would love to handle them maybe a little bit differently to how we handled them first time around. We'd handle them differently. Dare I say, we'd handle them a little bit better than what we did the first time around. This morning, I want to try and lay a a foundation for what we're going to have a look at over the next four weeks. You know, in the Old Testament part of the Bible, there's a book called Proverbs. If you've been following Jesus any length of time, if you know the Bible, you'll know this book really well. And it's full of wisdom. It comes under this group of writings that are called, uh, that's called wisdom literature. And it was written by a guy who was behind Jesus was, was identified as the wisest man ever to have lived, a man by the name of Solomon. He wrote so much of that book of, of Proverbs, and it covers all types of things that relate to how we live and how to succeed in life. And in chapter 4, we get this little bit where it's like, come closer, because he's been talking about some things and, 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 and sharing some wisdom, but then it's almost like he wants you to lean in just that little bit more and say, listen, What I'm about to say to you now, 
is really, really important. So it's one of those, if you remember nothing else, just remember this type moments. And this is what we read, chapter 4, Proverbs 4, verse 23, it says this, Above all else, guard your heart. Above everything else, more than anything else in life, he says, I want you to guard your heart. Why? Because he says, it's this, it's the heart which will determine the direction, the course, the path that your life will take. Everything that you do, everything that you are flows from what is within your heart. It's a great life verse, isn't it? Just to hang on to, to, to make something for, for ourselves to, to really hang on to. And so if you find yourself getting angry and getting annoyed with things, it's an indicator that all's not well is on the inside. If you're being mean or critical, then it's an indicator that something is amiss within. You know, like when you're, you're driving along in your car and Maybe you're getting low on fuel and that, that little light pops up on the dashboard. This is what he's talking about here. That the heart has got these indicators that begin to warn us that something's not quite right within. Because as goes the state of your heart, so goes the way that you live. He says everything that you do flows. Or maybe in some cases, again, I won't ask for a show of hands. Everything that you do erupts <laughs> from what's inside of you and it's so important therefore he says to make sure that you guard it like your life depends on it because according to what Solomon says it does above all else guard your heart for out of it spring the issues of life it will determine the course and the direction that your life takes now fast forward a thousand years after Solomon wrote this Jesus is walking around on the earth with his disciples and if you know the gospels if you know the life and stories of Jesus you'll know that wherever he went people would come out in their multitudes to, to listen to him to to see the things that that he did to listen to the things that he said and some of those people who were among the crowds that, that gathered around him were the religious people of the day the scribes and the the Pharisees and they would work their way through the crowd up to the front in order for them to be able to ask Jesus certain questions and apart from Nicodemus John chapter 3 who comes along in in uh, at night time who I think was genuinely searching for truth and really wanted to to follow Jesus and understand the message that he was proclaiming many of them when they asked Jesus questions they were they were loaded questions in the sense that they were trying to to catch him out they were trying to trip him up and trap him with the things that they said so that they could accuse him of things because they didn't like the message that he was preaching, what he was talking about, how, how God loves all people and what life in his kingdom was really like. They were really offended by the things that he said. But this was Jesus that they were dealing with. Didn't matter how, how clever they thought they were, Jesus was, was cleverer. And if you know anything about Jesus, he was way too smart to get caught out by anything that they could say to him. Because he could see through everything. He could see through all the externals, through to the real motivation that was in their hearts that was causing them to say the things and do the things that they said and did. And we're going to have a look at one such incident over these next few minutes that we find in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 to 20. It will come up on the screen as I read this with you. This is what Matthew records, reading from the New Living Translation. Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law now arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. So they come along, they want to hang out with him and, and see what he's up to. And they asked him a question. Why do your disciples disobey our age-old tradition? For they ignore our tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before they eat. And Jesus replied to them, and why do you by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God. So if they've served it into his court, he's just served the perfect backhand back into theirs. For instance, he says, God says, honor your father and mother, and anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. Parents, wouldn't you love to get that in a frame <laughs> and put it in each of your children's bedrooms as they grow up, anyone who disrespectfully <laughs> goes against mom or dad must be put to death or is it just me that would think like that you see you can see I've got issues in my heart that I don't know why I said that <laughs> but you say it's all right for people to say to their parents sorry 
I can't help you, for I vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. Listen to this. This is what Jesus says to them. You hypocrites. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but they're what? They're, say it with me. They're, their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. And then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. Listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You're defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. And then the disciples came to him and asked, do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? I think Jesus knew full well the reaction that it caused within them. And Jesus replied, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. So ignore them. They're blind guides leading the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they'll both fall into the ditch. And then Peter said to Jesus, explain to us the parable that says, people aren't defiled by what they eat. Don't you understand yet, Jesus asked. Anything that you eat passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. Obviously, this happened pre-COVID because now we're all really good at (laughs) washing our hands, aren't we? Let me explain what's taking place here, give it some kind of context. Because as I said before, the Pharisees these religious leaders, they come along to where Jesus is and they're asking him a question that they were hoping was going to catch him out. Because according to the Old Testament law, any person who performed any kind of sacred work for God needed to undergo certain ceremonial washings before they did it to make sure that they were clean and ready for that work. This is one of the laws that they they had. It was a law specifically that was for the religious leaders, but they had turned it into pretty much a law for everyone, saying that everyone had to do this. They expected everyone to to follow it. And so they asked Jesus why his disciples didn't do this themselves. And so in response, Jesus turns their accusation on its head, because whilst they're accusing his disciples for not performing what was only a tradition, he turns it back on them and accuses them of committing something far greater, far weightier, and that they willfully, willfully broke something that was a huge part of of, of God's law in favor of something that they had made up themselves. You see, they'd invented this tradition that said a person could verbally dedicate all of their money, their wealth, their belongings to the temple when they died. So they weren't actually giving it away. They were just verbally saying this which meant that if anyone came to them asking for some help or support or for them to be generous towards them, even if it was their own flesh and blood, their own parents, their mom and dad, then they could say to them, hey, I'm really sorry, I would love to help you, but but it's not mine to give, it belongs to the temple. And so by doing this, they were breaking one of the main laws, one of the the big ten commandments that, that were given to to Moses all those years ago and that specific command to honor your father and your mother. And so what, what I think Jesus is saying to them here is this. He's saying, come on guys, you're accusing my disciples of, of breaking something that, that's not even a command of God, something that you've made up and, 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 and made it into a law yourselves. But you're inventing a tradition that you're placing greater value on than God's word itself that enables you to weasel your way out of doing something that God very clearly commands within his law. And this is what they were like. They, they came up with their own rules time and time again that would keep them from having to obey God's law. I mean, how wrong is that? And then he goes on to say exactly what he thinks of it. Words that you never want to hear Jesus say to you, we read it together, verse 7, this is what he says, you hypocrites, you hypocrites. Don't you love this about Jesus? 
that he just says it as it is. He'd be great on catchphrase, wouldn't he? <laughs> Say what you see. <laughs> and he says it because we can't, we can't fool him. We try to, don't we? Let, let's be honest. We try and hide things. We try and mask things. But Jesus sees everything. And forget all this stuff, gentle Jesus, meek and mild, that, that makes him out to be some kind of wimpish, weak, effeminate kind of person. That's not the Jesus that, that you read about in the Gospels. That's not the Jesus that we've been worshipping this morning. Because he calls it for what it is. He's not afraid to call it out for what it is. You hypocrites, he says. Now, of course, he's gentle. With those who are hurting, he'll come alongside. He'll put his arm alongside them and he'll go, there, there. There, there. And, it, and he'll be that, that, that loving, affirming, accepting person, helping us when we're going through those, those difficult times. And we all go through them. But there's other times where he'll come and he, he won't be there, there. It's there, there. This is where you need to go now. This is what you need to be doing. You need to pick yourself up and you need to be getting on with this and getting over it and, and moving on into the things that he has for us. But with those who are trying to manipulate and, and hoodwink others, which is what they were doing here, he calls it as it is. There's no messing about at all. Because he sees everything that's taking place, doesn't he? He sees the motives, the true motives you know, the, Jeremiah says the heart is deceitful above all things. And how many times, again, I won't ask for a show of hands, have we said something or done something because we've kind of justified it to ourselves? <laughs> because it's maybe something that we really want. And so we'll, we'll justify it knowing really it's not the right thing for us. But Jesus sees the motives behind everything. Now let me just pause for a moment and, and say a couple of things here. Because for those of us who are Jesus followers, our ears should be pricking up right now. Because this is a great reminder to us, isn't it, today, that we have to be careful that we never fall into the same trap that the religious leaders here in this story fell into. Where we elevate traditions to a higher position than they deserve where we give them more weight and, and prominence than they maybe require. You see, traditions, I think, are great if they still work and if they're still relevant. But if they don't, we have to ask ourselves the question, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? We need to either rethink them or we need to retire them. We just need to stop doing them and think of new ways, perhaps, that, uh, in order to do, especially if it goes against what God says in his word. But one thing we never want to do or become like is the religious leaders here in this passage where we put our own needs and our own wants and our own preferences and our own traditions above the command of God to love other people and to reach out to them, which is what is absolutely key and critical for us here at Lakeside, isn't it? Because always, I always want us to be thinking about those who don't know Jesus. Those who are far from God, how can we find ways to somehow help them connect with God? And so Jesus comes alongside. He says, look, he says, I don't care how things might look, how good things might look on the outside. He says, I see beyond all of that, that, that veneer. And I see what's really taking place within. And he says to them, I don't like what I see. Now, the Pharisees knew a lot about God, but they didn't know him personally. And I think this is where they, they fell down. They're, they've got a great head knowledge. They could tell you the law. They could tell you what the scriptures said. And they could quote chapter and verse. But they didn't know him personally. That The penny kind of hadn't dropped from, from here down to here, the heart where it really mattered. Because when you really know him, that changes everything. Hello? Hello? That changes everything, doesn't it? Or at least it should do. Changes how we think, how we act, how we speak, how we live our lives before him. And so he calls the crowd in close here to him again. And he gives them this really important truth to grab hold of in that it's not, the, it's not what goes into the, the mouth that puts you at odds with God, but it's what comes out. It's not what goes in, but it's what comes out. 
And this was really offensive to the Pharisees. This would be like one of them drop the mic moments where there'd have been a stunned silence as soon as he said this. Because they placed such great value on the externals. What a person ate and what a person drank and all those outward appearance things. They had loads of rules relating to this where they almost graded a person's level of spirituality by the things that they did. They thought that by doing certain things, observing certain rituals, following external practices, that this is what pleased God and made him happy. Can I just say this morning that that's called religion? That's called religion. Where if we think that we can earn God's approval and his acceptance by doing certain things or by reading scripture time and time again purely just to try and earn his approval that's that's not christianity that's not what god has called us into I said last week religion works from the outside in doesn't it it says you follow this set of rules and then you might be able to earn god's acceptance but christianity is so different that it works from the inside out in that Jesus comes and takes up residence in our hearts and he begins to transform us from within that begins to change the way that we think. And as a result of that, we, be, we start to speak and live and act differently. And so Jesus says to them here, they're on the outward things. The hand washing and all of that, speaking to these leaders in this context, he says, they're outward things. What is of greater importance is what's taking place within so what he's saying to the people here, the ordinary, everyday folk, as he's explaining what he's saying here, he says, is that it's not about what goes into your mouth that's most important, but it's what comes out. In as much as the words that you speak, the things that you do, and the way that these affect other people around you. Because the truth is, God is far more interested in what you say than in what you eat. <laughs> That doesn't mean you can eat anything. We've got to look after our bodies. We don't just want to fill ourselves with rubbish. But it's not about what goes in. It, it's all about what comes out. He's far more concerned about the words that you use about and towards others than he is what you had for your dinner last night. Or is it 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7 tells us because when, uh, when the prophet uh, Samuel went to, to Jesse's house to anoint one of his sons as king and he brings in all of his sons until he finally gets through to, to David. They, they thought that the eldest Eliab would have been the, the ideal fit because he was tall, he was handsome, he was strong. He's part of the army, this, that, and the other. But he goes through all of the sons and he comes to this conclusion that man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. He looks deep within. And we have to be so careful. We never fall into this trap ourselves, don't we? Because only God knows what's really taking place within a person's heart. Now, this is mind-blowing for them. This is revolutionary, what Jesus is saying to them. So much so that his disciples have to get him a little bit later on to explain in a bit more detail exactly what he meant by this. And so he says, okay, listen, just follow along with me. Whatever goes into the mouth goes into the stomach, yeah? And they're saying, yeah, yeah, we get that. And he says, then it makes its way from the stomach out of the body. Don't need me to explain that anymore to you. He says, it goes into the sewer. He says, but the stuff that comes out of the mouth, well, that's an indicator to the condition of a person's heart, what's really taking place within. And it's that which has the potential to defile you and to put you at odds with God and to offend God. That's why he goes on to say, verse 19, for from the heart come these things, evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, slander. Mark in his gospel adds a few others to that list. He says greed, malice, deceit, envy, arrogance, folly. In other words, he says these are the things that offend God because when you do these things, you hurt other people. And when you hurt other people, you hurt God. Why? Because God loves all people. And so when you offend people God loves, you offend God. Let me say that again. When you offend people God loves, you offend God. This is why we have to do all that we can, church, to put a guard around our hearts because all of us are prone to this. All of us can fall foul to this, whether we're a follower of Jesus or not. This is an issue all humans struggle with. 
It's that old saying, isn't it? The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. This is why we have to guard it. And so if we could somehow, somehow get a better handle on what goes on within, then that could change things dramatically on both a personal and a much wider, dare I say, even global level. Now, as I said before, this was revolutionary to the people of Jesus' day. But it's just as important, 2,000 years on, for you and I to really grab hold of this ourselves and remind ourselves of this, that our behavior will eventually mirror what's taking place in our hearts. Because out of the heart, Jesus said, the mouth speaks. Out of the heart flow the issues of life. Above all else, Solomon writes, guard your heart, for it will determine the direction that your life takes. You see, has anyone ever said this? Sometimes I say things I don't mean. Anyone ever? Anyone ever said that? Come on, talk to me. Yeah. I think what's perhaps closer to the truth is is this. Sometimes I say things I don't mean to say out loud. (laughs) How about this? He makes me so angry. Or she makes me so angry. Anyone ever said that? Come on, confession's great for the soul. This is therapy this morning, isn't it, in in church? No, what that person is doing really is surfacing the anger that's already within you. It's showing you what's already within your heart. Because what's inside of you will find its way out of you. And when it comes out in a way that that hurts other people made in God's image, then it hurts and offends God. And so we've got to put a guard around our hearts, haven't we? We've got to try and learn how to say, and this is what we're going to learn to say over the next few weeks, how we're going to learn to say to our emotions, you're not the boss of me. And so anger, what are we going to say to anger? We're going to say, you're not the boss of me. Guilt. What are we going to say? We're going to say, guilt, you're not the boss of me. Fear, we're going to say, fear, you're not the boss of me. Now say it with some gusto as if you really mean it. Lust, you're not the boss of me. Worry, you're not the boss of me. Say it to those things, not to your wife or to your your husband. And certainly don't say it to your boss at work. Because they are your boss. <laughs> just a couple of things to think about as I finish. Maybe the band can come back up and join me. So I just wanted to lay a foundation for us this morning. It's all about the heart. It's all about the heart. But picking upon what Jesus said about what goes in physically will find its way out. I want to just to apply that spiritually and just suggest four practices, four habits. Maybe if you're taking notes, you might want to write these down. Some things that we can can think about on the back of this this morning that will feed our souls souls and hopefully help us develop an emotionally and spiritually healthy heart. This week, I want you to, to, to try to control what you think about. Try and get a better handle on maybe what you think about. The Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Make these the focus. Try to control what you, what you think about. This is why I think it's so important to try and get into that regular routine where we kind of spend in time in God's word because what goes in will come out and the more we get into God's word, the more his word gets into us and that's the more that begins to come out from us and we begin to, but begin to know more how God thinks and we can respond more and more like him. So think about the good things. Try to control what you think about. Secondly, try to control what you say. Okay, see how you get on with this. Because words are powerful, aren't they? Power of life and death, Scripture tells us, is contained within the tongue. And so before you say it, maybe just try and breathe for a moment before it comes out. 
before it erupts, try and just take a moment to breathe, maybe count to 10, say to whatever it is that's going to come out, no, you are not the boss of me. And only say it if it needs to be said. And think about the way that you say it. That acronym, think, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? If it's none of those things, don't say it. Don't say it. Try to control what you say. Number three, try to control what you look at. So many things are competing for your attention as they are mine. And not all of it is healthy. So be mindful of the impact that that could have. And number four, try to control where you go. Be mindful of where you allow your mind to wander or the things that you put your energies into. You know, if you're a Jesus follower, and I've got some really good news for you, that you already have a boss within you who is way bigger than any of your emotions. And his invitation to you today is this. He says, come to me. Come to me. Follow me. Learn from me. He says, let me be the boss of you. And I'll do something for you. In, uh, and I'll do something in you because I don't need anything from you. All I want is your heart. And so he says, let me. Let me come in. Let me come and take up residence within your heart. And let me show you how you can live the life that I've called you to live. I wonder if we can bow our heads. The team are going to lead us in a song. We're going to take up our offering in a moment. And as I look around, I know that most of you here have made that decision at some point to invite Jesus in to make him your Lord. And that's, and that's wonderful. And thank God for that. But maybe you're here this morning and you've never invited Jesus in and you know that you need help. You need to know God's peace, God's love in your heart. Maybe you need his help to, to help you not to respond in certain ways maybe. And, uh, you know, this isn't self-help stuff. This is allowing God's spirit to come and take up residence within and learning from his word, the principles that we find in his word, that we can build them into our lives and we can learn to, to, to live like this so that we can look more and more like Jesus to the world around us. Because I believe what the world needs to see is Jesus. And he's going to see it through you and through me as we live the life that he's called us to live. And I just want to give you an opportunity. And those of you watching online as well, you can join in with us now. If you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, you want to take that very first step and invite him to come in to your heart, to take up residence within. And I'm going to pray a prayer, a really short, simple prayer. And then I want you to do something for me at the end of that when I ask you to. Put your hand up if you've prayed this, to saying, Jesus, I want you to come and be my Lord. And we'll respond and hand you something. Would you pray this with me? Lord Jesus. I thank you that you love me so much that you died for me. You counted my life so worthy that you laid down your life for me. And today, I give my life back to you. I come to you. I surrender my life to you. And I ask you to become my Lord and my Savior to forgive me of all the things that I've done wrong and to give me a brand new start. And Lord, I ask that you would help me now to follow you all the remaining days of my life for you to be the boss within me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just while your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Has anyone prayed that for the first time? You're saying, Rich, I've invited Jesus in. I want to know what it is to live with him as my Lord. If that's you, very quickly, just do something for me. Would you put your hand up now just so I can see? You're saying, yes, I'm inviting Jesus in. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Maybe those online, let us know in the chat. Last time, you can put your hand down if I've seen it. You can put that, you can put your hand down. Last time, anyone saying yes to Jesus this morning? Thank you over there. God bless. Hey church, three people have responded to Jesus this morning. I think that deserves a hand clap, don't you? We thank him. Those of you who put your hand up, someone should come with you, uh, uh, come to see you. They'll hand you a little pack that will help you, give you some details on what that means now to take those steps forward. But let's stand. The team are going to play us out in the song. We're going to take up our offering together. 
kids are going to come back in and join us. And we've got some teas and coffees upstairs. So please don't rush off. Next week, we're going to look at worry, how we can say no to worry. So I really want to encourage you to be here with us for that. If you can, invite someone to come along. But uh, let's go out on a note of praise, shall we, as we finish this morning.
just thank you for your love for each and every one of us. I just pray, Lord, as we go forward this week, Lord, that we might know you living in each one of us, Lord, and know how you're changing our hearts, Lord, by the way that we act this week. Amen.